I don't know if y'all know someone who, when we talk about the kings of comedy, most of us, when we talk about the kings of comedy, we think of Cedric the Entertainer, Steve Harvey, Bernie Mac, D.L. Hewley. They had predecessors that were funny as hell, and they should have done the kings way of comedy funnier. back then. Way, way funnier. Red way Fox. Funnier. Um, you had the guy on Kid and Play today, and I can't think of his name. He was funny. But the one that oh, you're talking about, you're talking about Robin um, Williams. Um, was it Robin Williams? No, nah, Robin. Um, ah, damn. You talking about the dude with the baby kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baby kid. He man, he left before his time. But I said yeah. all that to set you up for this. The one brother that mostly everybody took inspiration from is this guy right here. And we're going to talk about them giving him a biopic, but take a look at his comedy. I'll slap you in the mouth with my dick. <laughs> <laughs> One at a time, please. I'm going to finish with this motherfucker asking me about my mama. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was back in the 70s. Dude was unabridged. He was raw. And they were supposed to have had this biopic starring Mike Epps come out. Um, and we never could get things to matriculate. So in his first day, directorial view of a movie, they're going to have this brother right here. Y'all know him well. Kenya Burris is going to be directing, writing, and he's got a star-studded producing team to do the Richard Pryor biopic, of which him and MGM won. And these are the notes. Kenya Barris will make his fe uh, featured directorial debut with a biopic about comedian Richard Pryor. According to Deadline, Barris will direct for MGM, who won the film rights at a highly contested auction. The film will be produced by Pryor's widow, Jennifer Lee Pryor, via her production company, Tarnish Angel, and Barris via his production company, I'm not even going to mess that up, but Ink Society, La Vitian <laughs> Films. Tori Magritte will also produce with Adam Rosenberg, executive producing. Larry, do you think he's going to get an iconic comedian right? I do, actually. I think that, I think as far as Richard Pryor is concerned, mm -hmm. I think there's probably only, there's probably only a couple of people that could get that right. Mm-hmm. And I think I think Kenya Burris is one of them because he's so politically incorrect and doesn't give a f, right? And that's really how Richard Biden, large, you know, in large part, it was he was really sort of uh, just a totally politically incorrect before people knew what politically incorrect was. He was just out there, you yeah. know. So I think he could do it. Uh, the only other person I think that could probably do it would pro right now would probably be Eddie Murphy if he wanted to do it because Eddie Murphy was like a serious student of, of Richard Pryor yeah. and loved Richard Pryor. And I mean, and, every time Richard, I've heard Richard him talk Pryor, about him, he speaks about him with such reverence. Richard Pryor I, loved him too. Richard Pryor yeah. loved him before, before he left, they had many meetings. They talked, they chatted up. I mean, they had kind of like a, you know, uncle nephew type relationship before he died. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you one thing that one thing that I like Richard Pryor, one thing I liked about Richard Pryor that I wish Eddie would follow in his footsteps is Richard seemed to continue to do stand up throughout his career. Like he did movies, yeah. he had big blockbusters, but he always seemed to go back to his stand up and and he never left that sort of foundation behind. I feel like Eddie Murphy just left it he just walked away from it and even when people have begged him to come back like even when he was i think it was when he was winning the um the mark twain award at the at the kennedy center and there was another award he won people begged him just give us five minutes come up and just give us five minutes and he wouldn't even do that i'm like man because that dude, I mean, when Eddie Murphy was doing his stand-up, that dude was the best. I mean, I thought Richard Pryor was the best. Eddie Murphy had that dude. He was so good. I mean, 
Eddie was like the embodiment of Richard Pryor and Red Fox and Moms Mabley and all the greats. It was like they all rolled all their best love into Eddie and, and he just took it and ran with it. And then he just said, ah, I'm done. <laughs> you know, it's like he took his gloves off and left him in the in the ring. It was just like, I'm retired. I'm out. You well, know, do you, do you think that one of the reasons why comedians back in those days, because it wasn't just Richard Pryor who still did stand up. The comedian we was talking about from House Party, Robin Harris, he was still doing stand up. Even Red Fox was doing stand up. And do you think it could just be that back in those days, in order to to have a complete living, you had to do both versus nowadays, these comedians, once they, they hardly do stand up anymore because the money is so good once they get in the movies. Do you think that has anything to do with it? No, I think it definitely has something to do with it. But I also think that for some people, I think they just love the art of stand up and a lot of them still do it. Like Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart is in everything. Mm -hmm. You see this dude in movies, you see him in TV shows. He's, you know, he's doing commercials and he still does stand up. Yeah. I think there's just some people that just still, they just truly love the art form. And I'm not sure. I think Eddie Murphy might have been great at it, but I'm not sure he loved it. It's just yeah. like well, some of those athletes. You get some of those athletes who are fantastic athletes, and they're great, and their parents push them, and they do wonderful things. And then they're just like, I don't really love it. And so they're they just you know, and it makes you wonder like how great, how much greater could they have been if they actually loved it? I'm not sure that Eddie Murphy loved it. I think he did it. And he probably loved it for a while. And then I don't know if something happened with him in Hollywood and that just soured him to it or what. But mm -hmm. okay. man, I would really love to see him come back and, and you know, and do something. Well, I understood. Well, ladies and gentlemen, post us all your comments on if you think Kenya Barris is the man to do the yeah, Richard I Pryor biopic and if you're going to watch it. And speaking of politically um, not correct, Larry, am I wrong for posting this? This is the AG for Kentucky. And it that says, dude. never trust uh, a, a Negro who gets their hair cut at Supercuts. A black man's edge up will tell you everything you need to know about his respect for culture. Ladies and gentlemen, this might be politically man. incorrect, but damn it, I got to agree. Shouldn't no brother be getting a haircut at Supercut? Damn it, I got to agree. Larry, am I wrong? I can, I, can, I can tell you, there's a couple of things. And I'm not being, I'm not racist with this. I'm just being real. There's no way in Sam Hill, I'm letting some strawberry blonde cut my fade. It's just not going <laughs> to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, she looks like a she looks like a, a wonderfully pleasant human being. She probably is as nice as can be. She probably rescues puppies from from out of the out of the gutter and takes them over to to a non kill shelter and all that. She's probably a wonderful human being. But there's no way in hell I'm gonna let that woman touch my head. Well, well, well look, the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> look at my man Edge up lying on the left side of his head, Larry. <laughs> Man. It looks it looks like a meteor hit the side of his forehead. That ain't no edge up. What the hell, man? <laughs> man. Boy. Well, we know I, what he's about, so I mean I'm not surprised. Yeah, man.